I know a lot of you have got either the TMUA or MAT or maybe some other admissions exam right around the corner. And in a lot of my videos, I go on and I bang on about knowing a certain trick or a certain technique to solving a problem. And then I get a lot of people quite concerned asking me, oh, do I need to know this trick? Do I need to know this rule? Do I need to know this niche kind of uh, formula that's not on the A-level syllabus, not on the TMUA syllabus or the MAT or whatever exam syllabus you're doing? Do I need to know this trick? Now, my response is normally, you should know as many tricks as you possibly can because you never know when one of them might be useful for a specific problem. So there's loads of examples of questions where, for example, if you know modular arithmetic, you can approach that question in a, you know, in a, using modular arithmetic and get to the answer more quickly and thus get the marks more quickly and move on and spend more time on other problems. But this video is actually to show, showcase that actually you don't necessarily need um, a bunch of extra tricks or techniques. And sometimes if you just try and tell yourself, oh, I need to use this trick, I need to use a trick to solve this or I need to use a technique, you almost fall into, A, there's, there's two reasons you don't want to do this. A, you might fall into a sense of, oh, I'm not good enough, I don't know this trick, or you can almost then blame the question, be like, oh, what a rubbish question, I didn't know the trick or technique for that. But in actuality, maybe there is a way to do it without a trick or technique. This is a really good question because you can solve this in two ways. One, using a trick or technique method, but that you know, using that trick or technique actually takes longer. So the second reason for why, maybe why you want to not just result, resort to going, okay, I need to use this exotic trick is because actually sometimes you don't have to use it. Because remember, at the end of the day with the TMUA or the MAT or the ESAT or whatever exam you're doing, there is gonna be a set syllabus and every single question can be solved using that set syllabus. This is one of them. Let's have a look at this one. A triangle has side length 11, 60 and 61. Find the area of the triangle. Now, depending on whether you've seen this or not, there's something called Heron's formula, which allows you to find the area of a triangle given three side lengths. And here we have three sides, 11, 60 and 61. So if we knew Heron's formula, we could just substitute the numbers directly into Heron's formula. But you don't need to know that for the TMUA or the MAT, but it is a useful rule to know. But I'm gonna be showing you how you can solve this without. And the mindset you wanna have is, well, if you don't know a trick or technique, or maybe you can't remember Heron's formula, but you know it exists, you might be thinking, oh gosh, do I need to know Heron's formula for this? And you, remember you don't. So what I would highly recommend is you go over the syllabus and know what's in it and what's not in it. Because in, in the exam, if something like this came up, you can then reassure yourself and go, actually, you know what? There's a way to solve this without Heron's formula. So let's have a look at this problem. It's actually really not too difficult. Um, so if you haven't, have a go, pause the video, have a go at solving this problem. But essentially, the trick is to spot that it's a certain type of triangle. We're trying to find the area of a triangle and we could think, okay, well, we could use half AB sine C and maybe you know, use the cosine rule to work out sine C or work out cosine and then work out sine using the fact that sine squared plus cos squared is one. Or we could cross our fingers and hope that this is a right angle triangle. And conveniently, it is. So, oops. So if we look at the two shortest sides squared, now I don't know what 11 squared and 60 squared is. Well, actually, I do know what those both are. Um, this is, uh, but I'm gonna leave this as 60 squared and I'm just gonna use the fact that I know what 11 squared is. It's 121, which conveniently is 60 squared plus two times 60 plus one, which is 60 plus one all squared, which is 61 squared. And so therefore the area, well, this, this triangle is a right angle triangle because it satisfies, actually satisfies like the con converse of uh, Pythagoras' theorem. So remember Pythagoras' theorem says that if A, B, and C are side lengths of a right angle triangle with C being the hypotenuse, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're kind of using the converse here. Um, so if you satisfy A squared plus B squared equals C squared, you can be the side lengths of a right triangle. And if you're not sure why that's true, I'd encourage you to prove it, and I'll give you a hint, use the cosine rule. Uh, anyway, so we have a side length of 11, side length of 60, side length 61. We want to know the area of this triangle. We can just use half base times height, of course. So half times 11 times 60 is 11 times 30, which is going to be uh, 330. So the area of this triangle would be 330 using or oh, from making the observation that it's a right angle triangle. So didn't need to use Heron's formula, could have used Heron's formula. And you know, if I'd spent months and months practicing and you know, I knew Heron's formula inside out, I could absolutely apply it here, but you don't need to. So kind of two morals of the story here. Firstly, don't blame yourself uh, or don't blame like the exam or like 
what, whatever for like being, having a rubbish question because you think that it's going to be some trick because at the end of the day there will be some nice method to it and this method or this question kind of illustrates sometimes if you do know the exotic trick or formula even then it still might not be appropriate so here i think heron's formula may have been quicker or about the same amount of time but it's not like you're saving 10 minutes that being said though knowing lots of tricks and techniques helps but i think this video hopefully could give you a bit of reassurance as we get closer to the final stage that if maybe one of your friends or you see a video of mine or whatever and you go oh gosh he's used that really really niche trick that i've never heard or seen of before what if i need to come up with a niche or a trick like that in a, in a video in the exam sorry um yeah don't stress don't stress Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll leave a video on screen where I solve a TMUA style problem and I'll catch you over there.